Have you ever wanted to create a PDF from Power Apps? If you have, then stay tuned because this video is for you. My name is Brian Knight from Pragmatic Works. Oftentimes, we get projects where a custom, customer wants to create a PDF inside of Power Apps, whether it be an invoice, a permitting information, or some other mechanism where they want to take the information from a data set and push it into a PDF, maybe even email it out. This is a common, common requirement inside of Power Apps. There's a number of ways of doing this. One of the ways is using third-party tools. Uh, for example, if you have a PDF already and you want to put the Power Apps data into that PDF or a Word doc, there's some third-party tools that can integrate into that to make that happen. In this video, though, we're going to focus on creating a PDF from scratch. That PDF is going to be first created from an HTML doc inside of Power Apps, converted uh, using a, a Microsoft Flow or Power Automate, excuse me, and then ultimately created again as a PDF. So the intermediate step is the HTML piece. If you want to find an easier way, there are a number of third-party tools you can use to ultimately do the same problem, uh, solve the same problem in a much easier way. This, they do, of course have a cost, but this is a uh, an easy way of doing it by yourself. So let's begin. Let's take a look at our, our core problem we want to create. So ultimately, we want to store this file. Uh, it looks something like this uh, inside of either SharePoint or OneDrive or email it out. Those are some of the mechanisms you want to do. So we're going to choose OneDrive for business for the time being. But we can use any of those uh, OneDrive, OneDrive for business, SharePoint, a number of different locations you can use to ultimately store that intermediate file. So this is what we're trying to produce. We're trying to create from a gallery that looks like this, the PDF that you saw that looks like this. So same information, just in two different ways. So let's take a look at how we can do that. So first of all, we're going to uh, uh, drop in some HTML uh, text here. So we'll go to insert and we'll drop, oh, not a label in, excuse me, oh, a little quick, a little trigger happy there, text and HTML text. Now, this is not a required step. What we're using this for is ultimately help you kind of uh, visualize the HTML and kind of debug it before we go through the flow steps. So again, this, this is not required. We could put all that logic into the button that calls that Power Automate flow. So with a number of ways of doing it, we're just going to take this one way just so you guys can see what we're creating in our case. Uh, if you wanted to keep this style and from a debug perspective, go ahead and hide that, hide the HTML text I'm about to create and, uh, and do it a number of ways. So let's take a look at how we can do this. So first of all, I've got the HTML already created here so you guys don't have to watch me do this. Now ignore the styling at first. So we'll come back to the styling in a moment here. But as we kind of go down here, we'll see, okay, I've got my header one. This is my project, my header for that project. Then I'm doing a number of, of, of table rows and table headers here for my project name, my status name, and my active. Now the core of the code that we really care about here is this concat code here. We're saying concat, concatenate in every row that you're seeing in the gallery on the left. And so for every row, we're going to put this line that you're seeing right here. So we're going to open it up with a table row and then some TDL for that table row, TRTD. And we'll put the columns in here for project name and for status email and for active flag. So this is the core code that we have to do. And as you see, we're kind of breaking out of the literal code here and putting in the column name by putting this little pair of ampersands right here. So reasonably co uh, uh, common code here for HTML. Now, if you're curious about the head, the information you see above this, the styling information, what I did, and I'm going to copy this in real quick so we can kind of see what the code looks like and paste that in. All right, so from a styling side, what I did is I went over to w3schools.com. You went to uh, CSS, look for tables, and as you kind of scroll down, you'll find one that you like. I chose this guy at the bottom here. We then can customize it how you want. By hitting try it yourself, you can get the core code I'm seeing right here, copy it from style to style, and then change the colors that you want to make this look uh, more appropriate for you. Okay, so that, that's uh, essentially, I'm just keeping the, keep the standard code that you see right now, uh, but we could stylize it however you want.
Now, a few things to note that when you style, when you put the style code in here, you will not see it in this HTML text. The debugging I'm using more is just to see, hey, does it do the column names line up? Did it look okay from that perspective? Now, it will show itself in the flow later when it creates the HTML and the PDF, but it will not show here. If you want that code to show, what you have to do is you have to go into uh, each of these tags here and put your styling in the tag itself. So for TD, you would have style equals and then you know yada, yada, yada after that, whatever kind of styling you want to do. Then you'll actually see it inside of that. Another note here is this PDF generator is going to be very, very fickle with your code. HTML is very forgiving, however, PDF is not. So I'll show you in a moment how to debug some of those challenges also and what, what will cause some of those issues. So we'll, we'll actually trigger a few issues later in this uh, webinar. All right, so we have this now done. We're ready to rock. Let's go ahead now and drop our button in to create the PDF. So let's go ahead and drop that button in. We won't style that button in any way. We'll just call this uh, Create PDF. And the code we're going to have to do now is we're going to jump out to Flow now, our Power Automate and Creative Flow to actually create this, PD, this, this PDF doc. Again, the steps are we'll create the HTML, then the PDF. That, now, that, that creation of the PDF actually is a conversion process. And that conversion process creates a blob in memory, but doesn't actually save that blob anywhere. Then we create the PDF somewhere on a site, whether it be SharePoint, whether it be a OneDrive, wherever that might, the final resting place may be. You might email it out, you might pop a link in there, whatever you wish to do. And then you could, if you wanted to, delete the file after, after you've used that transient space also. So let's go ahead. You definitely want to delete that HTML doc, though, ideally. So I'm going to go ahead and go to create a new flow. All right, let's go ahead and create a new flow from uh, instant, from blank. We'll, be, we'll start with Power Apps. And we'll go ahead and just call this uh, create PDF from Gallo. All right, whatever. And hit create. All right, with that now done, again, the three steps, create the file in OneDrive. That's be an HTML file. Convert the file to PDF. The third step is going to be to create the file again as a PDF. And you could create some fourth step there to either email the file out, to delete all the transient files, whatever you wish to do. So let's kind of start with the first step first. Let's go ahead and I'm choosing OneDrive for business. Again, you can choose whatever you wish to, to locate this for the most part. I'll choose OneDrive for business though and create file. Now, in my case, I'm gonna go ahead and point to the location you saw before. Let me go back one step here. The location we saw before is this Power Apps folder on my OneDrive for Business. Okay, so I'll go ahead and point to that. I'm gonna hard code mine because this is gonna be a transient folder that we'll use just to kind of store this application information at. Next is the file name you wanna choose. Now, I'm choosing to actually request that information from Power Apps so I can provide the user a link to that file afterwards. So I'll go ahead and choose Ask. Now, before I do that, I should probably go ahead and rename this task. And you'll see why in a moment here. I'll go ahead and rename this and say, create maybe HTML dot, uh, file. Oh, create HTML file. <laughs> That's interesting. I didn't see it do that for. Let's try that rename one more time here. <laughs> all right, we'll just go with we'll just go with a uh, create file and I'll put HTML. Wow. All right. Well, whatever. Okay. Oh, I see. It's because I have the file name is required. Just let me do that rename step now. Okay. No worries. We'll, we'll actually rename it after we do this. Ask for Power Apps. So the file name is going to be provided by Power Apps. The content for the file is going to be, again, requested from Power Apps also. The reason I wanted to rename this before that, before this is because he now has create file in it. Now it should let me go ahead and, and rename this. All right. Create HTML. But unfortunately, now my variables are set and I've got these inputs now have create file in it instead of uh, create HTML file. That's okay though. We'll be, we're going to use this to debug right now. Our next stop is to go ahead and convert the file. So let's go ahead and do a convert file. This will be, again, OneDrive for business, and we're looking for a convert file. Okay, there's a few of the conversion files. Let's go ahead, I'm looking for the preview one. Okay, it was actually right in front of my face there. I'll just, we'll just use this one right here, actually. All right, it's gonna be a PDF file. The unique ID for that file is gonna be the ID that was created earlier. So let's go ahead and point to the ID. 
from the create, create HTML. See, I'm using create HTML, and there's the ID of that file. So, go ahead and do that. Let's get rid of my face so you can see the whole thing here also. All right, so we have the create ID. Next, we'll go ahead and hit new step. Now, we want to create the file again now from that convert file. So, we should probably go ahead and, and, and rename this guy also just to be a little clearer here that we, that we say uh, convert to uh, PDF. There we go. So, at least we can kind of tell what's going on there. Our last file, last step again, is to create the file again. This time, it's going to be OneDrive for Business and Create File. Okay. And where do you want to put this file? I'll put it back again in that same, that same, PDF, that same uh, uh, Power Apps folder. All right. The file name, uh, I'm going to just hard code this for the time being. You get the idea though. We can, we can do some extra work in here. And I'll create, I'll create this one called uh, I. So Brian.pdf. We of course would would likely take the P HTML file coming in, strip out the HTML, the uh, the .html file, convert that into PDF, and that'd be the better solution. But we'll keep it real simple. Now this one's a be, be really careful with this one. Make sure that you choose the convert to PDF, convert to PDF, and get the file content from there. Now we also could go through and say file name, and actually just pick the file name from the previous step also. Let's try that. And see how that goes. Okay. Now, we'll see some interesting stuff when we do this. Let's go ahead and save this now. With that now saved, let's go back to our PDF. And again, I'm going to create some bugs so we can kind of debug those in a moment also. So, I'm going to hit Create PDF. Let's go ahead and go to Actions. Go to Power Automate. And we should have a Create PDF from Gal. There we go. First thing it's going to need is a file name. We'll go ahead and pass it a hard-coded name for the time being of test.html. I'll call this just, you know, brian.html, comma, and then what is the content of that? So, again, this is where I would go through and put all that HTML doc that we did earlier inside of this, or I may have a variable that does it or whatnot. But in my case, I'm going to go ahead and use the HTML that we've already dropped in, dot text. Now, in your case, dot HTML text, excuse me. Now, in your case, that might actually say HTML text one. I've been doing it over and over again a few times to make sure that this actually went smoothly. So uh, this one actually say HTML one dot, dot uh, in your case, your case. So let's see what happens when I fire this off. Now, again, uh, this this, this is going to give us some a little bit of an issue, but uh, hopefully, I've created that issue. We'll see. Hit create PDF. Then in OneDrive for Business, we'll see a few files get dropped in. Hopefully, there we go. All right. We have this little temporary file right here, and it was created. But I see a few issues, looks like. I've got a uh, zero byte. There it goes. Oh, finally, it was created. There we go. All right. So, we have our brian.html, and we have our brian.pdf. Let's see how it looks. Okay. So, we have, it looks pretty good. Now, let's, let's find some ways to break this for now. I like to break stuff and show you guys the same kind of problems that you're going to experience, the same kind of problems I experienced preparing for this. I want to go ahead and show you guys uh, how picky some of these things can be also. So, let's go back and tell and see how we can break the process here. So, our requirements are now done. Things look beautiful, right? Uh, and this worked out great, but this is, of course, a staged, staged item here. So, it looks, looks like things are working pretty well. And I can then return that brian.pdf from the flow and then actually pop a link there to actually download it or email it out. So my requirement's done. So you could hit pause right now or stop on me if you wanted to go ahead and you think, try this yourself. However, in my case, I'm going to try to break a few things now. So first of all, I'm going to do something really simple to break this. And this is some of the stuff that drove me nuts when I first started looking at this. So the first thing is, let's go ahead and something that seems that it's very innocuous here. Uh, let's let's kind of change the order of some of these things. So I've got this uh, THTD TR right here. What if I and this is completely acceptable inside of HTML here. If I go ahead and just quickly change that around a little bit, just make that where it's closing out the row before it closes out the header. All right. Let's see what that does to our PDF now. All right. Takes a few seconds here. We should see about a minute ago should come to come, come turn into a uh, about a minute about a second ago. There we go. Let me just refresh this. There it goes. It already did by, by itself. So if we open this up this time. There we go. So now we're seeing some weirdness now, right? That all my my PDF was successfully created. However, there's no data in it. 
So this is one of the gotchas I found that it's very, very picky. This convert file is very picky about the order of, of the, the, the items. It has to be perfect HTML for it to ultimately convert that PDF for you in this uh, canned way of doing things. So let's try to actually, well, let's fix this one and create another problem. Of course, to fix this, we'll just revert those columns back. So we'll go back into our HTML here again. And you'll notice everything looks happy. Like if I actually go back over here again and go back and select the actual brian.html here, we're seeing that the HTML looks perfect, right? So to debug this will drive you nuts and because uh, it has to be absolutely perfect in the PDF land. So I can fix this again by making sure that I close my header first and then my row. The other mistake I made was right here. I was ending my row here before I ended my detail for the row. Let's go ahead and create that PDF. Now watch what happens this time. Again, it'll take a few seconds here. Here's my a few seconds again. My HTML looks perfect, right? HTML is a very forgiving language. Unfortunately, this PDF here is not going to be very, very forgiving. So there we go. Even a few seconds ago, and it should there we go. It will now show you the first row, but no subsequent rows. It's one of the big gotchas again. The HTML has to be perfect. And so you might want to use some kind of editor to make sure it's generated correctly from the first moment. But if you don't, you're going to get things like this. So ultimately, the order of your TRs and your TDs and your table, your table headers, all of that stuff matters. Uh, again, some of the ways you can expand this is you could go through now and email that out. You take the link there, the ID that we had out before, add a flow step to email that. Or you could also display a link where somebody can actually click the download and then ultimately destroy that file if you wanted to as well. So there's some ways you can kind of expand the example that we, we covered here. I'll put the code for the, um, the HTML, uh, the all items code down below in the description of this video also in case you're trying to copy and paste. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please do subscribe to this and hit the bell icon. And if you want to, us to build an app for you, we'd love to build apps. And we have a load of training classes on Power Apps and Power BI and the whole Power Platform at PragmaticWorks.com. You'll find that link in the header as well. Thanks so much for watching this video. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. Have a great day. Bye-bye.